um, you know, disrespect is not going to be related back to you. Everyone agree with that? Or you disagree with that? Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be related back to you. Eight out of ten, and I'm being generous, eight out of ten times it's not going to be related back to you. You're going to be told he agrees with you. Maybe you won't be lied to if he says, I totally disagree and I'm not up for that. But you won't, if he says, yeah, yeah, fine, I agree with that, you're not going to hear the other stuff. You're going to miss that. As opposed to if I say in my terms, like I was a little concerned or I was wondering about that, I'm going to get the opportunity, even if the person is sort of on their best behavior, I'm going to get the opportunity to see, like, what, what comes, like, whooshing at me? Is there sort of anger or frustration <laughs> or disinterest or eye-rolling? Or is there, oh my gosh, I did, oh, sure, well, let's talk about it, no problem. Is there interest and support and care? Do we, when we talk, do we talk about this well? Or he totally doesn't get what I'm talking about. He's a good person, but like we're not on each other's wavelengths emotionally. So there's a ton of information that we get when we handle things ourselves. Now, that's easier said than done for most. Because we don't have a lot of practice at that. Some people do, and some people don't, I guess, depending on maybe who your friends are, or maybe who your parents are, or maybe, you know, other people in your life. Maybe you have more of an ability or more experience sort of being direct and bringing things up and saying what you're not happy with or saying that you're wondering about something or saying that you have a question about it. But most people, when I talk about it, sort of get a little bit nervous. Like, I'm not saying that. I don't want to say that. How am I going to say that? I don't want to say that. Which is another reason that it doesn't get said, that it doesn't get done one-on-one. -on -one. It sort of gets outsourced to that other person, a shop and a friend, a parent, or whatever. You find out what the problem is, or you find out what that was really about, or you find out what the real issue is here. I don't want to find out what the issue is here. It's too difficult. Which I'm not, I'm not taking away. It can be really difficult. It's not, it's often not a skill taught about our midos and how to be kind and how to be considerate and how to be down the cuffs and how to be chesedic sort of in our thought process. And those are really, really, really important lessons for life. And they're really, really, really important lessons for marriage. You need a lot of down the cuffs for marriage. You need a lot of mabakar for marriage. You need a lot of, um, I was once, my, uh, I have twin girls who are just about your guys' age. And uh, they came home when they were in my nursery school. And they said, you know, Mommy, we learned today to be my bata. Really, girls, what does that mean? And they said, it means to smile. They said, all the time. They said, yes. So, of course, the social worker's in me goes into overdrive, and I'm like, no. And my husband, this was like Karen Pesach, the week leading up to Pesach, and my husband had just walked in after I finished doing who knows what in the kitchen for Pesach, and he's like, come on, you're not Mavazer? Like, don't flip out about them learning about being Mavazer at this age and that they should always smile. Yeah, you want to calibrate the lesson, fine, but Mavazer is important in marriage. Don the Cuff's list is important in marriage. It's not a problem of these midos in marriage. It's a problem when they're written on a blank check. It's a problem when we aren't making sure we're marrying somebody to whom we can give all these things because they're going to give them back. If we're mivatar and we're down the class close when we're dating, we don't really know who we're marrying. We're, we're ignoring certain things. We're assuming or ascribing a definition or, or uh, interpretation to certain events or certain conversations that we can't really know, that we don't really know what's going on. Did they really not mean that? Or did they really yes mean that? And when we have the conversation, we know better what's really been going on with this 
what's really between us and what's really not between us. So we're gonna we're gonna do a few examples and you're gonna get to practice a little bit how you would be in the relationship, how you would be able to explore something from within the relationship. But before we get to that, I want I do want to talk because I think that it's important to talk about what about red flags? What specifically are issues that everyone should look out for, should be aware of, should be mindful of, and be careful around, and to be not hypervigilant. Hypervigilant implies that it's too much. You're overseeing into something. And I'm not, I'm not advocating that either. Because if we don't, and, and, and when I talk about investigating something or, or discussing something that's bothering you, it's because I've seen problems go both ways. I've seen it where people overestimate a problem and underestimate a problem. They're over because of their own situation or something that they know about or some story they heard or some situation with the sibling. Everybody's suspect. And so one little thing that somebody does on a date and right away they're a bad guy as opposed to let me investigate, let me talk about it and really maybe they're a sensitive guy. But I, I just jumped because I was nervous. So when I talk about doing this, I want you to think in terms of both making sure there is something there and isn't something there. Right? The splitting and the coming together. It's two different components. We're not just talking about um, watching out for bad things, we're looking for good as well when I talk about having the conversation directly. But I do think it's important for us to talk about what are red flags. Red flags are the things that, they're the opposite of that, of those, the list on page four of what should be there. They're the things that should not be in any marriage. And they're on page Page six. And the reason that I feel the need to talk about it is that often, like I said, people think they find their their individual list, they, they can stop looking. They will not only stop looking for the other things, but they'll actively sort of deny or actively um, ignore certain things, you know? He's so popular, he's so um, well-liked and, and so sought after, he can't be stingy. You know, it just must be that the reason that we're out for four hours and he didn't even offer to buy me a drink is something else, he's absent-minded. And I just decide in my head, he's absent-minded, he's not stingy. He's absent-minded. It could be he's absent-minded, but how do you know? You just decide, you're kind of rolling the dice. It might be, but he also might be stingy. And maybe for somebody, stingy isn't a problem. But be mindful about that. When I just decide something can't be, I'm, I'm really kind of gambling with my future. So how do you figure out if he's stingy or not? We're going to get there. <laughs> I'm just throwing out the problems, and then we're going to do some of the solutions. What about somebody who is very, very um, learned and from, and um, he, you know, I caught him in a lie, or I think I caught him in a lie, and I say to myself, you can't. He can't be dishonest. Look how from he is. Right? Wait a minute. But what was that lie? Why is that incompatible? It feels incompatible. It sounds incompatible. But we don't know that it's incompatible or that we just made a mistake unless we check it out. There are many of those kinds of examples where people are sort of pushing aside, they're seeing their list of things that they want in somebody, and they're pushing aside the things that they see that are problematic. 
and they're pushing it aside because exactly what this uh, person asked, they don't know how, how do you find it out? How do you, how do you investigate it? So I, I don't want to think about it. I don't know how to investigate it, so I just push it aside. So we're going to talk about how we can investigate it. And some things will be that you confront it directly. Some things will be, like in the case of Stingy, you kind of present, um, you, you present a scenario. You, you wouldn't actually kind of say, hey, are you Stingy? No. Uh, but you might present a scenario like, oh, you know, I thought I'd go buy a drink. And what, what does he do with that? Now, the, the, the problem is, is that most people just, because I don't know what to do about it, they do nothing. And then they either jump to, he is stingy, I'm not interested, which may be a chaval. Maybe all those other things that you like, and you're thinking you see stingy, and he's really not, and, and you're throwing something away that would be great. And then there's the other person, or the other possible scenario, where I just ignore it, he probably just didn't understand, he probably just didn't mean it, and so I just ignore it, and then we get married, and he's kind of really stingy, and I can't, I, I, I can't take it. I was talking to a woman who was married for the second time, and um, she, had, she had been in a really bad marriage, and she got divorced, and she was done with marriage, and she was, but then her friends set her up with this guy who their husbands all knew, and he's a great guy, and they're dating, and she, he seems to be a great guy, and he's really smart, and, and they get married. Now, there were a few things along the way that he said, the one I remember, is, all my meals have to be cooked by my wife. And she was thinking to herself, okay, that's a little crazy. Like, I have five kids. He has five kids, and he's a widow. So we're blending ten kids. Like, people help. Neighbors bring food, and the big girls help. And like, all my meals have to be cooked by my wife? So she didn't say to him, huh? She said to her friends, huh? And they said, he can't mean that. You told me he's smart. You told me he's so funny. He's so great to be around. He's so emotional. He's so, he can't mean that. He has to know that that's just not possible. That's what he meant it. And there was no wiggle room from his perspective. She hadn't investigated. She just held up the dress and said, hey guys, Think it's gonna pinch me? Uh, it's not gonna pinch me. It looks great. It's gonna look amazing. As opposed to coming back and saying, you know, you said something I was a little curious about. I was wondering what that was about. <coughs> a couple of principles before I, I kind of put the test to you guys. A couple of principles to think about when thinking about bringing something to the person that you're dating. One is that it's always better, if possible, to say something in the moment. Because a lot of people worry, like, if I come after the fact to tell him that I'm curious or I'm worried or I'm concerned or I'm upset or I'm whatever about something, so they're going to know that there's a problem. They're going to just, like, piss it up. They're, they're going to make it not. It's going to be, you know, they're not going to be honest if they're trying to be on their best behavior. Maybe yes, maybe no. But when you bring something in the moment, it's a little bit harder for you not to get the, the, um, the real reaction. It's the same reason we're not, I'm saying, that I would prefer it if people didn't ask the shotgun to go get the answer for you. Because what gets lost in that is the real response. It's a similar concept here. When I can ask something in the moment or say something in the moment, I'm going to get an even more genuine response than if I say, hey, there was something that happened that I'd like to talk about. We have no choice. We have no choice. But it's preferable to try and get the reaction in the moment or discuss whatever it is in the moment that it's happening. So that's one kind of general principle. The other general principle is 
was once speaking to somebody who was dating and everything this guy said sounded so amazing and every question she had was like he was unbelievably like on par with her and at some point I don't even know how I thought this was years ago I don't even know how I thought to ask her and I said like could you just role play with me how you talk to him about this stuff that's worrying you and what came out was that every time she had a concern she would say, so I'm concerned about this thing. So is it this, is it this, or is it this? The guy wasn't so in tune with her. He was just smart enough to see which things she wanted to hear. She was giving him the answers. So the other thing in terms of getting a genuine response and feel for what this person is like is that you want to sort of say, I was wondering about this. What was going on, as an example? Without saying, was this the thing that was going on? Was it a problem with it? When you give away the answers, a lot of people are smart enough to know which is the right answer when I give you that kind of choice. So it's about addressing things in the moment, and it's also about trying to you know, not give away what it is you want to hear, and then wonder why this person knew what to say, but is not knowing how to be with me. It, after we're actually married. But they really didn't ever know the answer. They weren't ever really the person that you thought. It was that you were telling them how to be and they were going along with it. So those are two sort of basic understandings. And the other concept that I like to tell people is that when you're dating and you're feeling like, I don't want to bring that up, it's so uncomfortable, it's so mean, it's so, it's so, it's so not nice, Really think about if you were on the receiving end, if somebody had a question, if somebody had a concern, would you want them to just ignore it? You might. But let's say that's not a good idea. How would you want them to talk to you about it? You might have a better idea of how you can approach somebody if you think about how you would want to be approached. If I was worried that if my spouse was worried that when I say I never, right, I'm dating somebody and I say, oh, I never cook. If my, right, I'm trying to be the opposite of the guy who said my wife always has to cook my meals. Let's say I, somebody was dating and the, their, they, the woman said something like, oh, I never cook or I hate to cook. And the spouse starts getting worried like, are we having takeout every night? What's up with that? What's going to be? Like, what is that? I don't think she's for me. I'm done. Would you really want them to just be done? If them never cooking is a really going to be a, 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 a terrible thing for you, would you not want them to ask you about it? And if they need to ask you about it, how would you want to be asked? What's your problem? What would you, how would you want to be approached? You know, you said something, and I was just, wondering what that was about, right? So when you think about how would I want to be approached, instead of ignoring that somebody said my, my meals always have to be cooked by my wife, think what would I want, how would I want to be approached? What would be an appropriate, kind, but direct and honest conversation that we could have? How can I approach this person is, is answered best by how how would I want to be approached? Those are the um, basic principles for thinking about bringing something in a relationship. So now, now what do you do? <laughs> um, okay. You had it so successful. Huh? No, just like tilt it up and send it out. Okay. We're just going to do a couple of examples. You had to move the cup down and go through the crowd. Okay. We're going to do a couple of examples. <laughs> Okay, so we're just going to do a couple of examples. <laughs>